they would revolt against their ideological slave masters. They know that. That's why they want us to continue to be victims. We are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. That's the purpose of this channel, to throw off the ideological slave chains that they have put on us in the black community. So white... Welcome back to the Biblical Conservative Channel. We come against this anti-God, anti-biblical, anti-human, anti-black spirit. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell so you can receive notification when the latest videos have been released. Over the weekend, I had a chance to watch a few movies. I typically do not watch much TV or movies, but for once I had some free time to find some sort of entertainment. One of the movies I watched dealt with the impacts of slavery in Savannah, Georgia, and how it shaped race relations in that city and for a particular person in the story. Now, it's a fictional story. It wasn't a true story, but it depicted some truths in the movie. It was ironic because we had recently visited Savannah a few weeks ago. The movie was intriguing because it did not contain many of the Marxist, progressive, woke propaganda pushed by white liberals and black elites. It was an accurate depiction of the life of blacks on a plantation and the horrors of slavery and the horrors of chattel slavery. Yet in the end, it demonstrated the power of forgiveness and how with that one act, we can forge a better future for ourselves. Forgiveness is something that we as believers should be very familiar with. Jesus tells us to forgive numerous times. He gave parables talking about the benefits of forgiveness, as well as the harmful consequences for those who do not forgive. Remember the parable of the ungrateful servant? How who, when he was forgiven for much, he turned around and did not forgive his fellow servant and threw him in prison. And how God turned him over to the tormentors to be tormented until the debt was paid off. That's what happens to us when we don't forgive. In contrast, the prevailing notion in this secular culture is not to forgive, no. Rather, they want us to believe that we need to use all injustices, our slights done to us, or those who look like us, as justification for the redressing of grievances. Even if the atrocity was not done to us directly, or we were not directly impacted by it. I recently heard that some people chose not to celebrate the 4th of July because of the history of slavery in this land. Yet what people don't know is slavery was a common practice during the time of the establishment of this nation. It was not a practice unique to America. Slavery was a practice that is as old as human beings themselves, pretty much. It is depicted all throughout the Bible. Left to our own devices, men and women will always look to dominate other men and other women. And you have to understand something. Slavery usually happened in two occasions, either to pay off a debt or when a tribe or a nation or somebody was conquered in battle, they became slaves of the other conquering nation or tribe. Chattel slavery is what was unique to America, where people were seen as property and were sold as property. That's the difference. And you know, that is a result of the sin nature in human beings. And just because it is in the Bible, doesn't mean that God condoned it. What people fail to understand about the Bible is that everything in it is a statement of truth. God gives us those examples of how to live and how not to live. It's our guidebook. Just like God did not condone slavery, he did not condone polygamy or men with multiple wives or concubines. Yet it is in the Bible because he has shown us our need for him and that without him, we will pursue the most degrading and the base activities. That's why forgiveness is so important. God forgave us. Jesus died for us. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead to cement our forgiveness in the eyes of God. So it is an insult to Almighty God 
to hate someone and refuse to forgive them for something they did not do. But progressives and Marxists are all about the collective. They do not see individuals. People are just pieces in this game of life. The pieces can be moved around and manipulated however they see fit to accomplish their goals of power and dominance. Leftist Democrats know how insane it is to blame the ancestors of one group of people as a reason why another group of people is still oppressed to this day. They know the history of how black people thrived in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. They know about that in the early 60s. As Thomas Sowell states, if we wanted to be serious about evidence, we might compare where blacks stood 100 years after the end of slavery with where they stood after 30 years of the liberal welfare state. In other words, we could compare hard evidence on the legacy of slavery with hard evidence on the legacy of liberals. But that is not a conversation that white liberals and black elites want to have today. They know if the truth was revealed, the black masses would revolt and throw off their ideological chains. They'll break free of them. They would, they would revolt against their ideological slave masters. They know that. That's why they want us to continue to be victims. We are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. That's the purpose of this channel, to throw off the ideological slave chains that they have put on us in the black community. So white liberals and their black elite puppets use slavery, 1619 project, oppression, along with systemic racism to justify the demand for big government and social justice. And who does this harm? black people the same black people they claim they're looking to help when we are in constant strife and unforgiveness we cannot receive anything from god maybe this is one reason why the black community has experienced stagnation for the past 50 years or so we cannot progress unless we forgive we cannot be blessed unless we release we can't punish someone for something they did not do to us we must forgive. It is a command, not a request. We must forgive. We can't punish people for something they did not do. We have to treat people as individuals. Look at them as individuals and judge them based on that. Not judge them based on a collective or based on a group or based on something that was done 100, 150 years ago by somebody that looked like them. Because all that does is cause separation and division. And the house divided against itself will not stand. We must come together, forge a unity around common purpose. And as believers, we must be the leaders when it comes to that forgiveness. We must throw off, like I said, these ideological chains that white liberals and black elites have put on us to keep us divided and keep us separated and keep us at the necks of each other. Joe Biden, Democrats like him want to keep us in bondage, keep us enslaved so they can run our lives, so they can dictate to us how we should live. No, we are free people. We have agency. God has given us the ability to live our lives according to his plan, his purpose and his destiny for us. And we must forgive, number one, and then release because that's the only way we can progress. That is the only way we can progress because otherwise we're still going to be victims, but we are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. Thank you so much for liking and your comments and subscribing to the channel. Please share this with your friends, smash that like button, smash the subscription bell, share this with everybody you know we're trying to make sure people understand that they're not victims that they are empowered for greatness and all of this stuff that's out here that's telling them otherwise is false and will not benefit them in the end so please i appreciate that share that